Hello, this is a video describing how to repair and calibrate a Hewlett Packard 141T spectrum analyzer display section. Uh, this series of spectrum analyzers was produced from about the late 1960s up until the early 1980s. As such, they are extremely common on eBay and can be usually had for fairly cheap. Um, some of the plugins available for it also go up as high as 18 gigahertz, making it probably one of the cheapest ways to get a hold of an 18 gigahertz capable spectrum analyzer. Um, before we get started, just a few things that we'll need for this repair and calibration um, will be one, a multimeter, um, preferably an accurate one because the power supply voltage requirements on this are quite tight, so you want to have a multimeter that will be as accurate as possible. The next thing we will need is a high voltage resistive divider probe for a multimeter. Um, just seeing this should tip you off that yes, we will be dealing with the CRT high voltage sections. So uh, safety will be a pretty important thing when you're dealing with these. Even the low voltage sections run at several hundred volts, so you pretty much need to be careful no matter where on this circuit you're gonna be working. Um, the other things you will need are a pair of screwdrivers with insulated handles. Um, do not have, use ones with metal handles. As I said, we will be dealing with high voltages. Be careful. And the last thing you'll want is a container to hold screws in. Uh, there are a lot of screws inside of this thing. There are quite a few covers and panels that'll need to be taken off. Um, I prefer a container with multiple cells like this, so that way you can keep track of what screws went where, because a lot of them have the same threads and look very similar, but are actually slightly different lengths, so you want to be careful about that. So the first thing we'll want to do, before we even power it on, is to just check that the CRT is in good condition. Um, these units, as I said, are very old. Um, a lot of them, if you're buying them off of eBay, will have been shipped from somewhere and they may have gotten damaged during shipping and one of the most common things that can go wrong is that you can get cracks in the CRT. Um, in particular, it's not going to crack on the face where you can see it. it's actually going to be cracked on the inside down where the, uh, down where the connections are. So I'm going to need to take off the top cover and then I'll be back in one second. And so now, now that we have all the screws removed, we can take off the top cover. And the way to do this is you grab it by the back, you slide it out, and then it lifts off. Um, and we can put that aside here. And the area we are concerned with is this area right here, where all the wires come in. So, what you want to look for is this is the most common area for it to develop cracks. Um, so you'll see in some cases, ooh, is that going to focus? Um, it will develop cracks in where the wires are, and uh, if that happens, then you're not going to be able to power this on. Um, but there is a way to uh, test these things, even if the display sections don't work. Um, I will post a video describing how you can hook up a uh, a, an oscilloscope to the plotter outputs on the uh, plugins here and get a display from that, even if the display section does not work. So now, with the top cover of the unit securely back on, we are actually not going to power it on yet. The first thing we need to do, assuming that the CRT is in good condition, that we are going to need to check that the power supply is working. Um, I have seen instances where the power supply, if it is outputting at too high a voltage, can damage the plugins. So you need to verify that that's going to be working before you power this thing on with the plugins in. Um, so what you're going to need to do is remove the spectrum analyzer plugins. Um, so they just undo with a latch like that that reveals a little loop that you can pull on. Um, and an easy mistake to make when you're pulling these things out is to try and grab one handle right here and pull like that. The problem with that is that when these things come out, they tend to give very suddenly. They're very stiff. They've been in there a long time, probably. 
Um, and if you do that, then you're probably going to slam the plugins and your hand against the handle. Um, so you want to avoid that if possible. You actually want to just sort of brace against the top and pull like that, um, and then slide the plugins out. Um, excuse me while I bump the camera. Um, and now, once we have the plugins removed, we are actually going to turn the unit upside down and remove the bottom cover because that's where the power supply board is. And same as before, the, uh, the bottom cover just slides back very stiffly. Um, That didn't take forever. So now that we've removed the bottom cover, we can begin to look at the power supply inside. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is that um, when turning the unit over, um, it might be tempting to try and stand it up on the, uh, the plastic feet that are on the back, but generally speaking, I would recommend not trusting those. Um, we're talking about in most cases 40 year old plastic and so they're very brittle and they like to break um, so don't trust them don't really try to rest it on those back feet if you can avoid it probably the best way to to, uh, to store it if you need to leave it somewhere is to actually leave it on its side because it's got these very nice flat sides that'll stand up pretty nicely um, so I'm going to cut forward so we can get a better look at that power supply So now, now that we can get a closer look at the power supply, we will notice that the power supply is divided into two sections. You have your low voltage power supply section here and your high voltage power supply section under this cover here. So if we're going to uh, look at that, we're going to want to remove that cover. So uh, I'll be back in a moment when I have that removed. <laughs> 